Okay, so here we have the Hisense 58 R6109. And if you're asking what that means, basically it's the 58 inch uh, Revision 6 uh, model. And uh, the 109 is just a sub model. And if you're wondering who Hisense is, uh, Hisense is a sub brand of Sharp. Um, we've checked this product out and it seems to be pretty solid. It has a Roku TV built in. Uh, what should we know about this that you don't already know? Well, this one was bought at Costco for $379. Uh, it was on sale. Uh, this is Christmas 2019. Uh, January 1st, 2020 goes back up to $460. So depending on when you're watching this, you'll get an idea of uh, what the price is. Now, the number one thing to look for in a TV these days, beyond clarity and, you know, that it's 4K and the obvious stuff, uh, is that it is high definition. So the HDR, high dynamic range, I should say. And high dynamic range, really what that gives you is blacker blacks, um, darker blacks, and uh, it just makes everything look sharper. So you can see on the screen here, I put up a sample. We're going to flip the whole box upside down, even though it says upright is the other way. Grab it like this and slide it up. And a couple of things might fall out, and that's just fine as long as the screen doesn't fall out. There we go. Beautiful. So that is how you unbox a TV if you haven't done it before. And what's left in here is a bag that they had taped in. We're going to go through that in a minute. Pull the protector out. Park it. To mount, the, to mount this to the TV, I'll have to put two screws in, and no doubt in this bag is the screws. So we have the uh, Hisense Roku TV quick start guide. Uh, it just tells you how to mount it, what the cables are for. I think most people know this stuff, so we're going to ignore that. Power, and we have the Roku remote, and they even give us batteries. So over here is power. Over here, this is where all of the inputs are that you care about. Uh, digital audio out. We have a line in, just a typical mini DIN. And then we have uh, video, left and right audio. LAN in. Uh, and that's in case you uh, want a cable in your TV rather than using wireless. This is HDMI 3 and it's 4K at 60 Hertz. Then there's HDMI 2, which is also 4K at 60 Hertz. 60 Hertz is the refresh rate, so that's the, the number of times it updates per second. A DVD is 30 uh, times per second. 60 is pretty good. 120 is the new, uh, oh my God, standard. And this TV will operate at 120. Uh, well, it's sort of like an overclocking, and I'm not going to get into the detail other than to say that what it really does, why would you care whether it's 30, 60, or 120 hertz? Well, that's because of motion blur. When uh, things are turning corners or high-speed chases, you notice in the theater it's choppy. That's because they're showing you things at 30 uh, frames per second. Uh, this will do 60 normally, which is beautiful, and it will do 120 um, as, as an overclock. And then the, the, uh, the most important input here is the HDMI 1, uh, which again is 4K 60 hertz. Uh, but it has an ARC on it, A-R-C, and ARC uh, relates to audio. In particular, what that means is if you have a, a sound bar that you've connected this, what you do is you take your HDMI cable from your cable box and you'd plug it into your sound bar. And then you'd plug your sound bar into here. So HDMI 1 with ARC, that's where you're going to want to put your TV uh, and your sound bar. Anything that's really important goes in there. Then there's a headphone jack. There's also an old school uh, antenna cable, coax connection, and there's a USB connection. And that USB connection will be used for things like uh, playing uh, pictures and things. Basically, it's one of those features that all TVs have that nobody uses. So that's the power cord. I'm going to plug the power cord in, which goes over here. What I'm going to do for my cable is I'm going to make sure it goes into that one arc, HDMI one arc, which is this one right here. And I'll plug my PlayStation into HDMI two. I'm going to get the Roku remote out because it seems pretty obvious that's what you're supposed to do. So English. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, I'm in Canada. You may not be. It's for home use. By the way, when it says store, what that is is demo. Do you want it in demo mode? I do not. Most people are going to have wireless. Let's do that. Now, I'm not going to let you see my password, so I'm going to skim through this. Okay, so we're going to update it. So you can see at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, the little red LED flashing that's presumably telling me something like, I'm busy, I'm not dead, I'm busy. So even though I already entered the uh, code, which has asked me to sign into my Roku account, as soon as I did that, it said, you have no linked devices. 
So I'm now going to have to re-enter that. Not a problem. I'll just go ahead and do it. All right. So as you can see, uh, it's asking me uh, on my computer what uh, other apps I would like to install on it. And you can see there's everything from Disney Plus to Apple TV. So you don't have to have an Apple TV, Apple TV device. Uh, you can simply install the Apple TV app right on your Hisense TV. Anyway, I don't want any of these. I'm done. Okay, so as you can see, it's adding in the apps. I'm just going to click the OK button on the Roku. Everything is plugged in and turned on. You bet it is. This is saying, what are your inputs? On the back, what do I have connected to HDMI 1 ARC? So what I have is cable box. And on HDMI 2, I have a PlayStation. This does not need to be done. This is purely for your connecting pleasure in the future. So you don't have to remember that HDMI 2 is your PlayStation. This does nothing at all as far as changing the inputs. And just go back to roku.com on my computer or on my phone and I can sign in and I can add apps and they will just magically show up here. It's pretty cool. Now remember that the Roku, uh, in addition to uh, supporting all of the things we've just been talking about, it also supports games. There's a number of basic games that are built into Roku. Uh, you can, oh, like Free Pong. Let's go to Free Pong just for fun. So all I'm doing here is using the remote control. Oh, oh, oh I suck. I'm going to press the home button on my Roku remote. Take me right back to where I was. I'm going to press the up arrow and I'm going to go add channels. Let's see what this does. These are the apps for various channels. So I'm going to search for, well, TikTok, isn't that interesting? TikTok's here. That is a surprise, actually, because TikTok in North America is so new. However, you might be, you won't be shocked to learn that most of this stuff is designed, engineered, manufactured in Asia. And of course, TikTok is pretty big over there. So I'm going to go down to cable box. I need to change this because my cable box, my previous TV, was set to 1080p. So because I have cable TV, I'm probably not going to want to use the Roku. I'm probably going to use my standard cable box remote. So I need to tell the standard cable box remote that I have a new TV. Now I need to go into the video and say, it's not 1080p anymore. This is now 4K. There it is. So you can see here, it thinks that it's, it knows that it's 4K capable, uh, but it's currently set to 1080p. Well, lovely, but I want 4K. So let's go down and set it to 4K. Oh yeah, boy, <laughs> night and day. If you listen to other people uh, that have reviewed this uh, TV, you'll find that uh, the uh, color is excellent because it's uh, HDR. Uh, it is very, very clear. Uh, the darks are very dark, the blacks are very black. It is excellent. So two quick things to note. Uh, the first is that these apps that uh, you saw running they're not licenses for the apps, it's just the software. So if you, this does not get you Netflix, this gets you access to Netflix. This does not get you Hulu, this gets you access to Hulu. So yes, you still need to have your Hulu account and your Netflix account and whatever else. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, and we're just gonna flip through this quickly, Netflix, is when you go to a service like Netflix, they charge more for 4K versus uh, the standard 1080p. In my case, I've already, I'm already paying for the full service. In the States, I believe it's $11. In Canada, it's $13.99, I believe, so $14. So let's watch a few seconds of The Irishman and see how clear that is. Okay, that's pretty clear. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, as far as audio goes, uh, we've been told that you need the soundbar. Uh, my hearing shot. And I can tell you that this thing is pretty clear. It's much clearer than the Philips it's replacing, but it's still only 10 watts per channel. Uh, and there's two channels, so uh, it's just stereo. Let's just listen to a few seconds of this. Right. I gotta go out anyway. I only want to hear, man. There we go. So, yeah, that's just, uh, it's not only loud, it's clear. I'm gonna press exit here to get us out of Netflix. All right, so here's one of the interesting things that uh, you may want to change. When you power it up, it assumes you're a cord cutter and it takes you to the Roku directly. And then you've got to click on cable box, which is hardly a crisis. But uh, instead of doing that, you can program it to go straight to the TV because I'm not a cord cutter. And uh, as much as I like the Roku, I really want it just to launch straight to TV first. So what you can do is go down to settings 
And in here, there are lots of them. Uh, let me see which one we're looking for. And you can look at these as we go through. Power. I wanted to go to the cable box. Something else to note is that this does support screen mirroring, which is, you know, from your phone or, uh, you know, Miracast from Intel, that kind of stuff. This is my teenager playing on the PlayStation. And of course, this is not a 4K video, so it's very difficult for you to see on YouTube. But you can see that the quality is stellar. We have a PlayStation 4, and man, does it look great. Does it look great daily? Yes. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.